fault prevention with power quality analytics. This is the topic of our next lecture. And I'm having two colleagues here, experts in their field. It's Michael Schneider, he's the global head of grid planning and simulation. And Dr. Christian Bluck, he's a key expert for power quality. He will join him later on. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure you're curious how we solve your problems that you can avoid any power failures. So please come Welcome up on stage, Michael Schneider first. Good morning and welcome everyone. We are living in the biggest transformation of the energy system ever since uh, the principle of energy was developed more than 150 years ago. And the energy system used to be like a river, power being generated, transported, down from high voltage into factories and then consumed. This has completely changed. We are living in a decentral world where energy is being generated decentrally, renewable. Every consumer, every large industrial energy consumer is thinking about how to optimize the energy system from an efficiency, reliability perspective and also green. The key enabler for that is what we, and we heard a lot about it already yesterday and today, what we call a digital twin. Now, it's very important to understand exactly what a digital twin actually is. We hear a lot about it here in Hannover, about a digital twin of production, which follows a product from design into production and then the life cycle, the performance phase. At Siemens, we believe also there is an infrastructure digital twin, the same concept applied for infrastructure, where from starting from a system twin, modeling the requirements from the production side, uh, providing the energy system which enables the production and fulfillment of uh, processes on the industry side, then the building of the assets, which again creates a digital model, and then throughout the life cycle of operating a plant, having a real digital model of the energy system for production. Now, it is very important to link these phases and deliver true efficiency and reliability. And that's what we want to talk about today. So, at Siemens, from the energy management side, we are all about energy supply, of course, which has to be there, and then totally integrated power, um, having uh, IoT-connected energy generating devices and consumption devices, and then analyzing with analytical methods. And my colleague, Dr. Christian Bluck, will now show you an example, which we are very happy, PQ monitoring and fault prevention. Okay, thank you, Michael. Then let's talk about the real twin, and uh, especially on power quality analytics as a monitoring and diagnostic service for fault prevention. Here I have shown you some examples what can happen if the power quality is not okay. And these examples, they come from our long-term experience uh, in industrial electrical grids. You see, uh, sorry, we have outages, we have faults, and faults are normally related to distorted uh, signals. And if the client has an outage, he calls us and asks us, please find out the reason for the fault and please recommend us mitigations. What are we doing in this step? We are installing our measuring devices, measuring the signals, voltages, or currents, and we are seeing distortions in the signals. You see this on the right-hand side. And very often, these distortions have been uh, existing also before the fault. And the reasons were some small reasons, for example. Outages of capacitors. You see in the upper picture, you see a damaged capacitor. The capacitor influence the control, but then we are losing sensitive drives, and finally we are losing the switch gear in the process with uh, large outage times and uh, consequently large outage costs. 
The second example shows a damage control. More or less the same effect. We are losing air condition, we are losing frequency converters, and the end of the story is the outage of the plant. And um, the third example will be in the focus of one of my last slides. I will explain this more. We have learned that a lot of these faults have a history. So this means if we are able to observe the history of a damage, we have the chance to prevent the fault or to uh, uh, take uh, mitigation measures before we have the outage. And this is exactly our goal of the power quality monitoring. And for, to reach this goal, we need um, two components. We need a hardware component and we need a software component. I want to talk first about the hardware component. Hardware component consists of powerful measuring devices. We are using the Seacom Q200 power quality recorder. You can see the device on the booth here uh, at the energy uh, um, booth. And this recorder is able to um, explore high frequency ranges. The recorder has powerful trigger uh, uh, options and is able to um, record high resolution transients. This is very important to understand the system itself, but also the reason for anomalies. The next thing is what we need is a, a stable communication because such a power quality recorder produces a lot of data. And therefore, it's very important Then we are able to transfer the data to our power quality lab. We can do this, oh, sorry. We can do this on several ways. The first thing, and it's the most easiest thing, is directly connect the device to the internal communication uh, of the client, and we are accessing the device via a VPN channel. But sometimes the clients are hesitating to uh, implement such a solution due to IT security issues. They don't like the direct access to their grid. And in that case, we uh, use the following uh, configuration. We combine the, the devices to one uh, communication grid, connect it to a LTE router, and transfer the data wireless to our power quality center. So this uh, provides us separate communication uh, grids, and we have no influence on the IT security. The VPN configuration or the v uh, VPN communication will be done with the um, Cinema RC server. This is a communication software which you also can uh, 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 see at the booths. And uh, the data uh, themselves will be gathered by the Seacom PQS system. And based on the gathered data, we are doing our power quality analytics. And then we come to the next challenge, is the computation power. We are dealing with a lot of data, and this means we have to process a lot of data. And to reach this goal, we are using uh, methods of the artificial intelligence, because this is the perfect way to handle those data and to detect the uh, abnormal states and I want to show you how we are doing this. Our tool for do, uh, to do this is the Power Quality Workbench. This is a framework for fault prevention. And the biggest challenge is to transfer the data into information. Because only a small part of the data is relevant for our fault prevention. And to, to get this information, we are using in our framework uh, uh, machine learning methods. These machine learning methods are perfect to identify abnormal uh, system states. For example, which could be uh, uh, caused by normal operations, but also by, by fault operations. You see here a picture which shows a large set of bubbles. These bubbles, these are the normal states, and you see on the upper uh, right-hand side an area with some uh, uh, dots, and these are the abnormal states. And furthermore, you have to identify the operation uh, states. It's very clear that the um, uh, power quality indicator behaves different under low load 
than under high load condition. So you have to uh, you have to identify the typical operation states, and this will be done with clustering methods. If we have transient signals, time signals, which you are seeing in the lower side, then we are using pattern recognition methods to identify the, uh, the signal curves, to identify the events behind the signal curves. This can be done on the time signals, this can be done on the basis of envelopes or on the spectrum. All of these methods have one goal, to produce facts, facts which are de describing the system. And those facts, they are transferred to our expert system. The expert system combines facts and rules. And rules uh, are derived from our daily work. So this expert system exactly works as an expert. He connects his knowledge, it connects the experience with the facts. And the outcome of this uh, expert system is the evaluation of the state, identification, what has happened, and evaluation, is this critical or not. I want to show you an example of what we are doing. You see in the upper part of the picture the so-called timeline. The timeline shows us uh, the behavior of the system over a special period. You see some colors. These are the typical uh, states of the system. And you see some points. These are the outliers. Then the system processes these outliers and uh, identifies uh, uh, the key performance indicators with respect are they outliers or not. And you see the first four um, events were some transient currents, but which are related to uh, starting of a transformer, starting of a motor, starting of a frequency drive, switch off and on. So this is not critical, therefore the, the system uh, says everything is okay. But at this, for this client, we had a, a, a different situation in the middle of March. The, you see here, in that area, we have a lot of outliers, and the system says, okay, there is something not, uh, um, there, is, uh, there should be a, a, a strange situation. And the strange situation here was a short displacement voltage, which never occurs in the history. And this was a strong uh, um, indication of a high resistance earth fault. So we get a red signal light, and we immediately inform the client, please, we have to look, we have to closer look to the situation to identify the reason for this. And you see, with this approach, we are able to predict at some amount the future to avoid damages. And let's come to my last slide with a summary. We have learned that digitalization enables us to transfer our conventional network planning analysis approach to another level. Reason is computation power, sensors, and artificial intelligence. Especially the sensors with the higher frequency range and their uh, transient capability enables us to understand the operation much better. And if you are asking me, what will be the next step of us? The next step of us is to put this into MindSphere. And I hope you will follow us. Thank you very much for your attention.